It's hard to believe that it has been one year since Massachusetts issued a state of emergency due to the COVID pandemic. Earlier this week, Tony Mazzucco posted a message on his social media in which part of it read, I wouldn't repeat the last 12 months for all the money in the world, but if I had to live this nightmare over again, there is no other group and no other community I'd rather be a part of. Throughout this year, we have learned a lot and have become accustomed to our new normal of mask wearing, social distancing, and virtual meetings. Brian Boudreau takes us through the COVID year. Thanks, Kristen. One year ago this week, Massachusetts issued a state of emergency due to rising COVID numbers in here in the Commonwealth. At the local level here in Nord, a number of town officials were among the first to be quarantined in the state as a result of being a close contact. Included in that quarantine was General Manager Tony Mazzucco. It's tough to be in uh, quarantine. Uh, again, I was lucky on the health side. I'm lucky on the work side that my work has been keeping me uh, quite busy responding to folks and getting in touch with folks. But I think it's important to try to find a little time each day to do something that you enjoy, whether it's a little bit of reading, try to watch a little bit of television, play a little bit of a video game. Uh, I, I've been having lunch dates via Skype with folks and, and that stuff. Little things like that are important to just keep some sense of regularity. In the weeks and months following, society as we knew it began to change. Superintendent Dave Thompson announced that Nord Public Schools would be moving to fully remote learning. All town buildings were closed to the public. And many businesses were forced to shut their doors. With all these tough times came stories of hope as residents and business owners stepped up to help those in need. Um, so we started out with a spreadsheet of just local places that were looking for masks, Nord Hospital being amongst them, um, a lot of the local, all the local nursing homes, so Charwell, Ellis, um, Victoria Haven, um, Benchmark, a lot of, so all of those. And those were really our, our primary focus, making sure that all of our local um, frontline people were, were covered. Um, the police station they've gone to, Nord DPW, the light department, the fire department, um, food services at the schools, so that the staff who are serving all the lunches to the, to the kids every day are, are protected. Um, food pantry, we've covered them. So I mean, and I think that now we might actually be close to 8,000 masks well, and now surgical caps as well that we've gotten out to places. Like with the warm weather of summer came the reopening of many businesses and restaurants. Sidewalks and streets turned into extensions of restaurants as residents enjoyed their dinners safely outside. Central Street was transformed into a community picnic area for residents to enjoy. And enjoy it they did. Sports resumed play as kids across the town took to the baseball diamonds for summer ball. And the rec department worked hard to safely open Haas pools so residents could escape the heat. In August, the school committee announced that the public schools would be reopening in the hybrid plan, which would be a mix of in-person and remote learning. On Monday, August 10th, uh, four of our members met and deliberated for quite some time around what our preferred model for the opening plan was. After a lot of deliberation, the committee voted three to one that our preferred model for reopening for the 2020-2021 school year is the hybrid model. Now, it is important to understand that with the hybrid model, families do retain family choice, and as required by the state, Nord Public Schools is offering a remote learning academy. The second week of September saw children back in the classrooms. School is back in swing and high school sports, with many restrictions, were set to begin in October. Residents hit the polls early in November for the presidential election. The town worked hard to host the election in the safest way possible. As the winter rolled in, the cases were back on the rise and the restrictions tightened. But with the new year came new hope. As Norwood's own Moderna shipped out doses of the vaccine and our own police and fire chiefs were of the first to receive it. We queued up people here in the building. Um, their hands were sanitized, they wore a mask, it was a safe environment. Then you came in and got the shot. Uh, I said before, it's like the first time in my life I look forward to getting a shot, right? Usually you get a shot because you have to or you think you should. I, I wanted this shot in the worst way and I want the next one February 8th in the worst way. Um, I really didn't feel it. I, I wouldn't have known she was giving me a shot, except that I, I could see her. It really, uh, there was no pain, there was no discomfort at all. Uh, I, I think it was important, A, to show the members of the department that I'm confident in this vaccine and also the members of uh, the community here in Norwood. I have the highest confidence in Moderna. It's a company here in Norwood that we've had a relationship with them for a number of years. And uh, I think the science behind this is solid and I have no problem doing it. And I hope the community at large does also. As the vaccine continues to roll out to the residents here in Norwood and across the state, we are slowly making strides to returning to normalcy.
It has been a long and trying year for many of us here in Norwood. As this year progresses, let's make the COVID year a fading memory of the past. For Norwood News, I'm Brian Boudreau. Thanks, Brian. It has been a long year and it finally feels like we are moving in the right direction.